What's up, y'all? I'm finally back out here at the range today on what should turn out to be a really nice day. A little bit cloudy and hazy now, but should be some really cool temperatures out here to get some stuff done. I don't have any jelly testing on the agenda today, but I do have a couple more things to check out, and I'm going to start it out by testing out some more of this tactical X-Men armor. Now, if y'all watch the channel regularly, you know about a couple weeks, maybe a month or so ago, it's probably been a month, I tested out their level 3A stuff, which is this right here. This is just pure the uh, UA HWMPE, basically high molecular weight polyethylene fibers and uh, layers that are pressed together. This is, like I say, this is the three plus, uh, 3A stuff. This stuff did a fantastic job. It stopped everything up to 44 Magnum, just like it was supposed to. But this time we're kicking it up a notch with one of their level three options. So what you got this time is more of that UHWMPE with ceramic added on it. So again, level three rated. This is supposed to protect up to multiple hits of 762 two by 51 which is 308 so a lot more protection but of course that does come with a trade-off you've got more weight on this uh thicker material here and it does cost more so these are actually four pounds a piece whereas you know something like a steel three plate would be eight pounds so these are half the weight of steel now these are more than the weight of that uh 3a stuff obviously the 3a stuff was like one pound where this is four so four times the weight on this but you got a whole lot more protection and i'm telling y'all four pounds even i've got two of them in this carrier right here i mean eight pounds added is really nothing in the grand scheme of things i mean i change eight pounds of body weight uh, sometimes in a week just up and down eating or whatever so as far as me personally i'm not really feeling much extra encumbrance at all by having these two plates on now on the thickness of them you're still under an inch here it's 0.82 i believe what they say but definitely thicker than this 3a stuff of course again a whole lot more protection with this now these are the same dimensions size as those other ones 10 by 12 as you can see i'm a pretty large guy 6'3 about 2 205 to 210 depending on the week um and these you know these cover my vitals now they don't give me complete coverage of my whole torso none of them do with my size but they do cover your vitals which is what you really want to make sure it's covered up now again like i mentioned the cost of these is more than the level 3a obviously but it's still very reasonable you can get a set of these with the 15 percent code that's been extended on their side for under 300 bucks right at 280 bucks for a pair of these which for if anybody out there knows if y'all have ever looked at armor plates for ceramic that's not bad at all now they also do have another level three version i believe they consider these their classic type of plate they have another one i'm not sure the difference is it's much thinner it's more along the lines of the 3a stuff but it is it does cost more i believe you're under with that discount you're right under 400 for a set of those so pretty big cost difference i don't know the difference as far as the makeup they're still uhwmpe and ceramic maybe it's a different type i don't know what the deal is y'all can check that out but if you are interested in checking these out i will leave a link down below and like i said they've got that 15 percent code on there right now and they've got an additional little bit additional percent off if you buy more than one item one more thing i'll mention as far as the construction of them you can feel on the back that uhwmpe goes all the way edge to edge like i said 90 layers and then it's got this way whatever kind of polyester cloth or whatever kind of little protection coating this is now on the front you can kind of feel that the ceramic stops maybe about right here and then the rest of this is another softer squishier material that i'm assuming is for the catch of fragmentation and that kind of thing so let me give you a real quick rundown of the lineup we're going to test this stuff with first off we're going to start out with 556 we're going right to the m855 green tips i'm going to run them out of this 20 inch barrel a 223 wild chamber PSA on the Let's Go Brandon lower. Next up, some good old 762 by 39 here, just some Wolf FMJ 122 grain steel case stuff. We're going to run that out of the Ruger American here with the 16 inch barrel. And as y'all can see, we ain't bothering taking no baby steps out here, so we're going to step it right on up to the 308. Now, this is 147 grain FMJ here. I'm running this out of the 20 inch PSA uh, AR 308 here, 20 inch barrel on it. So if it stops this, which i feel pretty confident it will after what the 3a did it's done what it's claimed to do stop the 762 by 51 but just because that's all it's rated for don't mean we're stopping right there so i brought us a couple wild cards out here in case it survives all that and i've got enough room and it's still intact enough so i've got my 30 alt 6 out here now i don't have any fmj 30 alt 6 so i brought some 150 grain uh, remington core lock here pointed soft point and then i've got the 750 woods master here remington in 30 alt 6 this has got a 22 inch barrel on it 
And then after that right there, I suspect it's gonna be pretty much done for, but if there is a clear space and I can manage to fit one more in it, I'm gonna try out this 6.5 Creedmoor. I've got some Augula 140 grain FMJ, and I'm gonna run this one out of the Franke Momentum with a 24 inch barrel. All right, y'all, let's see if this stuff can do what it claims. We're gonna start with the 556, the 855 green tip here. I'm gonna put one 556 on the top left where I've got a little dot at, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run the uh, 762 by 39 on the top right, and then we'll check it out and then we'll move along. So let's see what this 556 green tip does. I don't have any doubt that this is gonna stop this. I just, I think this is gonna be an easy stop. Let's see what we get here. All right, I think that went exactly in the spot. Let me get that 308 and we'll go from there. All right, no surprises there, really. I'll take y'all down here and check it out in a second. But as you see, there was no water, so you know that means it stopped it. Uh, I think I said 308 was next, but I know y'all know what I meant. That's the uh, 762 by 39 here from the 16 inch American. I'm gonna put this one right there on that right hand dot that I've got down there. I don't think we're going to have any problem stopping this one either. That was definitely a lot more energy dumped than I seen the top pop off one of the jugs. Let's go down there and check those two out. All right, let's check out what we got from these two, y'all. So right there, that was the green tip 556. This was the 762 by 39. Went exactly where I wanted them. Now, no really, nothing you can tell on the front here, obviously, but when you can feel here, this ceramic is really broken up behind this 556. It's pretty much still in place though, but it's just really broken up. Now the 76239, on the other hand, this over here is pretty intact, but once you cross that midline, I mean, not only did it break it up, but it really just pushed it backwards and pushed it out of the way you can see here it even tried to push some out of the side but it looks like that foam did a good job of catching it so i don't think any fragments or spalling got out but it did try on the side there and then if we come around to the back here pretty good deformation this one right here that's the 556 five, that's the 762 by 39 i mean that stuff's hard as a rock right there buddy so it did what it was supposed to do and caught it you can see nothing got through the only place anything tried to creep out was the side right there and i don't think anything managed to get out but a lot more deformation than i actually expected just based on other stuff i've seen this is uh i expected that ceramic to break it up enough that it wouldn't deform that much but that's a lot of power going down here from both of those 20 inch 556 and that 762 by 39 so anyway so far so good let me set this up and let's hit it with that 308 all right y'all let's see if this stuff can do what it claims and stop this 308 or 762 by 51 so i've got this arms core 308 147 grain fmj i'm gonna put one round right down there on my dot so i can save the bottom for our wild cards hmm that's a lot of water either we had some serious energy dumped or that stuff went through let's go check it out All right, y'all, let's check this thing out down here. So a whole lot of water and the jug was busted. So you can see here, that's our entrance for the 308 right there. Went in here clean, definitely chunked up a bunch of the ceramic. Oddly enough, it all happened above it, basically where I guess it was kind of already weakened. This down below right here, all this feels completely intact, absolutely solid. And I would definitely trust anything that came down here even after this. So now let's check out what happened on the backside. So as you can see, a big, old knot right there now of course those two are already there that's your 556 five, your uh, 762 by 39 and then right there that's that 308 i mean you can see a big old bulge right there that would definitely hurt for sure and it would do some damage but it did stop at 308 out of a 20 inch barrel at 15 yards again if i didn't mention this is at 15 yards so as far as i'm concerned it's already done what it claimed it stopped at 762 by 51 and it stopped multiple rounds already so 
Now, what I will say is this stuff is behaving just like it's supposed to. Ceramic is a consumable. It's breaking up, it's shattering, and it's shattering those rounds. So it's doing what it's supposed to. That being said, the downside of ceramic or a consumable versus steel is it is consumable. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way if I put another round right there, I can already feel the, the uh, plastic on the backside. That ceramic is completely gone. So you definitely aren't going to get multiple rounds in the same place as far as high power stuff. But all of this down here is absolutely intact. I mean, that whole bottom section is still completely intact. So now that it has lived up to its claims, let's go on and kick it up a notch. All right, y'all, let's hit this stuff with one more combo. We're going to do the 30-06 and then the 6.5 Creedmoor. So again, 30-06, I didn't have FMJ, so we got this Winchester uh, or uh, Remington Core Locked 150 grain pointed soft point through the 20-inch uh, or 22-inch Woodsmaster here. So see what we can get. I really don't know what to think about these, what kind of guess to, to make here. You know, if it don't stop this, it is what it is. This is not rated for 30 off six, but being that it's a soft point, I think we might have a good chance of stopping this. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna put this one on the right dot and the uh, Creedmoor, I mean, I'll uh, put this one on the left dot, Creedmoor on the right. See what we get, y'all. <laughs> that was a heck of an energy dump. Let me go see what we got. All right, y'all, we lost a bunch of the ceramic from it on that one right there. Um, that being said, it looks like for the most part, it did actually break that thing up and catch it. So we'll take a look at it here in a second. Let's try this 6.5 Creedmoor. This was the 140 grain Agula FMJ. So 24 inch barrel on this one again at 15 yards. So we'll see what happens here. This is gonna be moving pretty quick. So this might, this might get through, I don't know. It's hard to say, it's really hard to say. Again, that was a heck of an energy dump. I went a little bit closer to the side than I wanted, but should have still been well within the ceramic, so that's no excuse. Let's go check that stuff out. All right, we got us a mess down here on this one, y'all. As you can see right there, that was the 30 alt six. This was the 6.5 Creedmoor. Again, I went a little closer to the side than I wanted, but it was still well within all the ceramics. So no problem doing what it was supposed to do here. As you can see, we got a huge mess, a ton of that ceramic here. Now, if we come around to the back side, here's where you really get messy. So right here, obviously that was the 30 alt six. Now, after that first 30 alt six, it had already blown out down here. This was already opened up so you would definitely be getting some spalling and fragmentation coming out of here same with the 6.5 creedmoor that right there is the 6.5 creedmoor so technically it looks like it did actually catch all of this it broke all of these rounds up and caught them all but it's just not rated for that kind of power out of some of these things that 6.5 creedmoor and that 30 alt 6 was just the velocity and the power going down here just blew it out i mean you would definitely get some spalling and fragmentation from this without a doubt you can see here on the table you got tons of that uh, ceramic there's some of your jacket there i believe over here i seen yeah there's a little bit of lead and jacket there so let's take this thing over to the table and we'll pull it open right quick and see what it looks like all right let's pull this thing apart real quick and see what's going on inside now unlike the uh, level 3a stuff that i tested we're more than likely not going to be able to recover any kind of uh meaningful pieces of of the uh projectiles or anything that we're going to be able to tell what it is anyway so see if i can flatten this out so we can start peeling back the layers this ceramic stuff is sharp that's why i got some gloves on all right got that pulled off that's nothing but just a, some kind of piece of fabric although it is really tough stuff it's almost like one of those iron on patches that you used to patch blue jeans with so as you can see here on the back that's your polyethylene layers so all of those supposed to be 90 layers of that let me just take all this off because it looks like the last couple is fused to the ceramic so there you can see let's see if i reverse this 
Uh, so this over here, this would have been the 65 Creedmoor, and that's actually a piece of the 65 Creedmoor. That's the jacket off of it right there. None of the lids in there. Who knows? I'm sure it broke all the pieces. Actually, there's a little more jacket. Some of that, there's a little bit of lid in there, but it definitely did what it was supposed to do and really just broke those projectiles all to pieces. So then if we pull back these last couple layers of polyethylene, they've really got it stuck pretty good to that ceramic, which is definitely a good thing. There you can see all your little squares of ceramic so there you go as you can see some of them are actually still intact the full squares are still intact you can see it's like a lot of rectangles i'm assuming yeah like a lot of just squares or rectangles whatever you want to call them there boron carbide ceramic i believe is what that is there's one full square of it there so pretty interesting as far as uh, projectile fragments yeah <laughs> good look basically because it just i mean it really crumbles them there's actually a piece of the jacket off of something there no telling what it is so pretty much what i expected to see although like i said at the beginning i kind of didn't expect quite that much deformation out of this polyethylene but it just shows you the difference between you know the handgun stuff and this rifle caliber stuff you just got a whole lot more power and a whole lot more power to have to design something to stop so the only other thing left in here is that basically weather stripping is what it looks like around the outside to try to catch any kind of extra spalling or fragment it is pretty tough stuff it's tougher than weather stripping but it's like a tough uh, foamy rubber liner all the way around the edge you can see it there it runs all the way around all right y'all i'm gonna call it right there for what i think was a successful test of this tactical x-men level three ceramic plate again this stuff did exactly what it claimed to do multiple high powered rounds up to 762 by 51 with no problem at all got a bunch of deformation and it absolutely destroyed the ceramic inside but that's what this ceramic stuff's made to do uh, i've tested some uh, other brand of ceramic in the past basically the same thing that's the trade-off again between something like this ceramic or the poly ethylene stuff versus the steel the steel you're going to be able to hammer and hammer and hammer and hammer that stuff but you got a lot more fragmentation to be concerned about and a whole lot more weight again this is this total is eight pounds i don't feel any kind of extra encumbrance i really don't i feel like i could do pretty good physical activity in this stuff without getting winded that steel on the other hand you're talking about more than doubling your weight and i can tell you right now after wearing a couple steel plates out here on the range all day I can really feel that. So if you are in the market for a set of plates, it's really just a matter of you deciding what your use case might be and you know what you want to be prepared for. Something like this, I think, is a very happy medium as far as price, as far as weight, and the stopping ability. This is probably what I'm going to keep loaded in this carrier. But let me know what y'all think down in the comments about what you saw from it out here today. What do you think as far as the difference between the ceramic and this, the pure polyethylene 3A stuff, the steel stuff? what's your opinion between the three and which one if you was going to get a set of plates which one would be your preference if you did enjoy the video make sure you hit that thumbs up button make sure you are subscribed to the channel and that you've got your notifications turned on so hopefully you don't miss anything when i upload it i'll leave a link down below if y'all interested in checking these out or their 3a stuff that i tested or anything else on their site check that stuff out and like i said you've got that 15 percent code or a little bit more of a discount if you order multiple things once again if you are doing some shopping check out my affiliate links in the video description i put a few new ones down there under my campsite link so check those out all of those places that i'm putting in that campsite are places that i personally ordered stuff from and that I, i've had a good experience with and if you ever see me on the community tabs post a certain uh, item you can be assured that i've either personally got that and can vouch that in my opinion it's good or i have ordered it and i'm waiting on it to get here so check those links out there's a little bit of everything down there and anything you buy after going through those links links i get a kickback from them towards the channel so i really do appreciate that once again i appreciate all my range gang members and every single one of y'all for supporting the channel i've gotten a little bit behind lately i've had a sick dog that i've been dealing with she's still a little bit under the weather but i hope she's coming around so i'm gonna try to get things caught back up but y'all just bear with me for a few more days the rest of this week it might be a little slow but i'm gonna get some stuff out to you so stay on the lookout for that and in the meantime stay safe stay prepared and i'll see you soon